Russia tomorrow. The Biden administration is beginning to support the idea of a Nuremberg for Russia, as reported by The Guardian. Key figures in Washington agree that a special tribunal is needed to examine the war crimes committed by Russia and to investigate the role of Russia's leadership. It's important that Ukraine be able to, as necessary, prosecute these things. But we're also supporting the efforts of the International Criminal Court to collect evidence and information. There's been discussion of some kind of independent court or tribunal being established. I think all of that's on the table. This is not a universally shared point of view. There are differing opinions across the Western world on whether this second Nuremberg is needed. Some fear that a high-profile trial might stall a potential negotiation process. According to The Guardian, it is Britain in particular that is taking a cautious approach. It was not without reason that Ukraine's first lady, Olena Zelenska, flew to London. We need to start the special tribunal against the crime of aggression of Russia against, against Ukraine, which will enhance the work of the ICC and not weaken it. We need it to punish those who are politically and militarily responsible for the crime of war and terror. This is the seventh point of our formula of peace, and I hope and believe that Britain can become the leader of its implementation. But France, the Netherlands, the Baltic states and now the USA are actively campaigning for the creation of a separate judicial body. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has confirmed that Europe supports the idea of a specialized tribunal. The proposed tribunal will be established with the support of the United Nations and will investigate the so-called criminal aggression. The specific legal term, a crime of aggression, was used against high-ranking politicians in Nazi Germany. This specific legal term, a crime of aggression, was used against high-ranking politicians in Nazi Germany. It is important to clarify here, the conversation surrounds the establishment of a separate UN-backed tribunal and not the initiation of a legal process within the framework of the International Criminal Court. This would resolve the issue of Im immunity for Russian high-ranking officials, including the head of state and could allow for Vladimir Putin, Sergei Shoigu, Sergei Lavrov and others to be brought to justice. Moscow is, of course, outraged about this. We are outraged by the statement by the Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs of France regarding the plans to create a special tribunal for the crimes of aggression of Russia. We have long heard about the desire to create quasi-legal structures on some kind of whim. The illegitimacy of this all is obvious. It will not have any consequences for us. The serious conversation about creating a second Nuremberg has become huge news and a massive point of conversation for Russian politicians and propagandists. They were convinced that they could get away with what they are doing, that the weak, fragile West would eventually fold and carry on doing business with Russia as usual. Turns out, they may not get away with it at all. They have also realized that they aren't just trapped in Russia, not being able to take a step outside the country, but that their position is even more vulnerable than it seems. Any domestic political instability could potentially threaten Putin's inner circle and staff with arrest and extradition. If, for some reason, God forbid, and I hesitate to even say it out loud, something happens and our country does not end up victorious, then we have to assume that everyone will be prosecuted without exception. This is Olga Skabeva's ultimatum to all citizens of the Russian Federation. We are all hated, she says, simply because we are Russians. They will put us all in jail, all of us. There is no other way for Skabeva and her colleagues to unite the electorate in support of the invasion of Ukraine. They need support. They need volunteers. They need a popular uprising, which is, of course, not going to happen. Because the purpose of the war has never been made clear to the public and remains unclear to this day. But here is another interesting thing. Take a look at how Margarita Simonyan puts it. If we manage to lose... The Hague, whether it's a new one or the real one, will welcome even the janitors sweeping inside the Kremlin walls. 
Here, Simanyan addresses the Russian elite, anyone who might want to get together and sleep away quietly or worse, plot a revolt. And that says a lot about the mood in Moscow right now. The war has been going on for nine months. Russia is killing people, including civilians, including children. The huge casualties, the hundreds of thousands of dead on both sides, the destroyed economy and reputation of a previously prominent Russia, the isolation expressed even in saying goodbye to McDonald's and Zara. What was all this for? is the question those at the top have to deal with. I mean, what has this one-man obsession brought anyone, even if we are now trying to put ourselves in the shoes of the cold-blooded cynics in Putin's inner circle? Nothing. The murmuring in the Kremlin corridors is so loud that it seems to be heard even here, outside Russia. We said it was our territory. We took it constitutionally. It was not our territory. Wait a minute. What does it say in the Constitution? By the Constitution, it's our territory or not. We announced it in the Constitution. Since the time we incorporated it, of course it's our territory, but this took place in the context of a military action. And so, does that change the Constitution? Is there a sign somewhere that this isn't completely our territory because it doesn't fulfill all the conditions? We don't have a sign, we have the actual understanding of the situation. The notion of a tribunal has been discussed for a long time since the beginning of the full-scale war, but it is only now that it is taking somewhat of a concrete shape. After Bucha and Mariupol, after the announcement of the verdict of the downed Malaysia Airlines flight MH17, after Ukrainian cities have plunged into the cold and darkness, the world has been not just to respond to the challenges of the moments, but to plan the appropriate punishment for the perpetrators. I would even use the word retribution here. It would be impossible to imagine Russia of the future without it, without retribution taking the form of a fair, independent tribunal chaired by international experts. Any notion of power changed through the fair elections, the release of political prisoners and the return to freedom of speech and human rights is impossible. Why did it take the world nine months to realize the need for a tribunal? Because the international community was totally unprepared for the need for such a process. After the Second World War, progressive society became overly focused on its own progress and did not notice the threat. It is interesting that from the very beginning, Vladimir Putin tried to present this war as the Great Patriotic War Second Edition. The Kremlin has tried to ignore the fact that no one attacked or had any intention of attacking Russia. The Church and Patriarch Kirill, personally, who blessed the war in Ukraine as well as the murder of civilians, have taken part in the effort as actively as anyone. And Patriarch Kirill has not forgotten to mention the Great Patriotic War as often as required. We remember the beginning of the war against our motherland. The formidable enemy who conquered all of Europe entered our sacred borders with full confidence of a quick and absolute victory. But we know what happened in the end. May the Lord bless the fatherland, our president, our commander-in-chief, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin, the authorities, the armed forces, and of course, our spiritual army of all Orthodox people, who with faith and love, by offering a prayer to the Lord, also offer love to their earthly fatherland. God bless you, brothers. And because you, Vladimir Vasilievich, are in charge of the National Guard, I would like the icon to be placed among the ranks of the National Guard of the Russian Federation. But here we are. These parallels with the Second World War are indeed coming to a reasonable end. The tribunal against the invader. And this is the first step. It is the first high-profile message that the developed world is excluding Russia from the list of countries whose opinions hold weight. The introduction of an oil price ceiling is another signal. The exclusion of Russia from discussion on European security process is yet another. Kremlin strategists have long argued that a country like Russia cannot be crossed off the European map. Well, it seems they were wrong. Russia may not be a completely rogue, isolated country like North Korea, but its influence is declining and will continue to decline until the war and this regime is over.
We operated in Russia for 12 years and the government tried to get rid of us three times. We had to leave, forced out of the country by new repressive laws after the first week of the war. Our freedom crushed by the authorities. We survived, started working from Europe, and now we are watched by millions of people every day. There's no other independent news channel in Russian. We have now decided to tell the truth about Russia in English as well. So that you could get news about Russia, the war in Ukraine, and Russian society directly from the source. We want to tell you firsthand what is really happening in Russia. Subscribe to TVRA Newsroom on YouTube and let's take a look at our future together.